Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of the Snowflake Data Cloud Summit here at the Moscone Center in San Francisco. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, sitting alongside my co-host and analyst, Dave Vellante. L last day of the conference for theCUBE, really exciting show. What's one thing that's really clear is that Snowflake's eco partner ecosystem is vast, and at this moment in time, there's one very, very good partner to have when well, it comes to AI. I just, I just want to say this is developer day, so more hoodies than ties. For sure, for sure, uh, yeah, exactly. But yeah, like everybody wants to be partnering with NVIDIA, with right? NVIDIA, yeah. indeed. Well, with that, I would like to welcome our next guest to the show. We have Carrie Brisky, VP Generative AI Software Product Management at NVIDIA. Thank you so much for coming back on theCUBE, Carrie. Always good to have you. And Thanks Vivek. Vivek Ragunathan, he is the VP of Engineering at Snowflake. Thank you so much, Vivek, for, for coming you, back on theCUBE. It's Thank great you. to have you. So, Kerry, I want to start with you, and really just at 30,000 feet, to talk a little bit about the ways in which Snowflake and NVIDIA are, are joining forces to, to really make the most of this era of enterprise AI. Yeah, I think that, um, well, our partnership started last year really. Uh, we were here at Summit last year and then we've really built upon that partnership. Uh, last year we announced the release of uh, our NEMO, which is for customization of generative AI models into the Snowpark Container Services, but now this year we've taken even further. We've deepened our partnership and so what we've done is we announced what's called a NIM, which is an inference microservice. Um, we, have, we have many NIMs uh, for generative AI models and what we've done is that we've in, in integrated NVIDIA Nemo Retriever as a NIM into Cortex AI. So can we go back to uh, Summit 2023? Monday night, uh, Jensen was up on stage with, with Frank Slubin, they had a wonderful conversation. And then that's when you guys announced, you basically, if I understand it, containerizing sort of what I call the NVIDIA stack, and that set you off on this, this path. So take us back to, to that point, and then where are you today, and what's the overall strategy with respect to NVIDIA? Yeah, let me bubble this back up and speak to, awesome. to why you know, NVIDIA and Snowflake are great partners. Uh, first, obviously, you know, every one of us is running on you know, the world's best GPUs that come out of NVIDIA, the H100s, like very soon, the B100s. Um, but more importantly, I think NVIDIA truly understands that you know, a great AI strategy is powered by a great data strategy. And to, to really have these AI applications run in production, you need to run them next to the data, right? Uh, and so last year we started very much with uh, Snowpark Container Services, which is a way for our customers to bring up, you know, AI applications of their own inside of our compute running on their data in a, in a safe and secure manner. Uh, and over the last year, uh, we've moved more to a fully managed offering, and that is Cortex. And Cortex is the idea that you have an offering that, is, that makes AI really easy for our customers to use. They can run it in production. Uh, it is safe and it is secure within their governance boundary, their data boundary at Snowflake. Um, and so Cortex went to, or Cortex, Cortex is a number of things. Cortex inference went to a GA like a couple months back. Cortex Search is something we announced in public preview uh, at the keynote uh, two days ago. Um, Cortex Analyst is a data copilot product that you can talk to your structured data with that we announced, like again, in public preview two days ago. And finally, Cortex Fine Tuning lets you personalize your, your, uh, your models to your data. Uh, and so all along this journey, you know, it's been incredibly exciting to work with Carrie and her team uh, to really extend Cortex to be able to be best in breed for the kinds of applications our enterprises want to run. So what do they want to run? They want to start with, you know, I have the Salesforce dump in Snowflake, I want to do win-loss analysis, I, my CFO needs like a reason we lost these deals, and that's Cortex functions, right? Then they go, I need to customize this, I need to write an interactive chatbot so my CFO can actually like talk to, the, to, the, to that data, and that's where, you know, something like the Nemo Retriever NIM comes into play. It's a great Q&A NIM, you can use it, you can combine it with a model like Mistral Large or Rekka from one of our partners or our own model, Arctic, and just have a chatbot that works on that data. And then you get to your crown jewels. You get to the, the structured data that is sitting in, in the warehouse and you want to start talking to it and ask, hey, you know, why is same store sales in Austin down today, right? And that's where our Cortex Analyst product comes in and, and you know, builds on top of our, uh, our investments in text to SQL LLMs. Uh, and, and 
And so overall, that's kind of how we work together. We're super excited, NVIDIA being in Cortex is very, 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 very important. Big deal. Yeah. There's so many rich vectors that I want to go into <laughs> based on all this. So, you know, you watch the business news channels, they'll say, oh, when's NVIDIA going to see competition? And, well, they have got the software stack, and, well, the, all the action right now is in the hardware, and Dell, and HPE, and Supermicro, and when's it going to go up the stack? And the, the, the interesting part of this conversation is this is how we're actually going to apply AI in the enterprise, leverage NVIDIA's software, other IP that Snowflake's adding. So can you, can you just, you certainly touched on it, Vivek, but just help us understand sort of Nemo, <clears throat> which is for model development, and then how are developers uh, uh, going to use, ex extend to the APIs of, of, in the NIMS? How do you see that playing out? Well, I think that the, the announcement really here is about NIMS, because most people are doing inference, right? So you send your data to an API, you get an answer back. Or you send your data to the API and you embed your knowledge into a vector database. And that's what Retriever's all about. I mean, the number one um, killer app for generative AI right now is Copilots. And so that's what we call text question and answer. So you, you ask a question, it goes and retrieves uh, some information out of your vector database, the similarity search, they bring it back, and then you send it to the generative model. And the accuracy of that retrieval process really matters because it's that old classical com computer problem, garbage in, garbage out. If you're retrieving garbage and you're sending it to the generative model, then you're actually spitting out a bad answer. So. That's, that's the beauty of um, what we call the retriever NIM, is because it embeds a higher accuracy for text question and answer problems, and then it, by then, when it embeds, it goes and retrieves even more accurate information. Got it. One of the things that, we, that we've heard about a lot on this show this week here at the, the Snowflake Data Cloud Summit is this, the importance of democratizing AI, and I'm curious to hear how you both approach that, that challenge to ensure that the benefits of AI are distributed to workers regardless of their skill set and in, in their facility with these technologies? I can go first. I, I see that as core to our differentiation, right? I see Snowflake as a company is, is you know, you don't have to sacrifice power and simplicity. Like, we're, we're, I, when we started as a company, the reason the, the Snowflake data cloud was as revolutionary as it was is you could have your cake and eat it too. Right? You didn't need to hire like six database like optimizing administrators to kind of go and optimize your indexes. It just worked out of the box. Um, it was almost, you know, dare I say, like the apple of enterprise, right? Um, and we're bringing that same approach to the AI world. Like people ask me what our differentiation is. My answer is, you know, we're going to start from the customer's use case, work backward, and make it really easy for them to take that use case into production very quickly. So it's simple to use. Uh, it's safe and trusted, and it's secure, right? And so, what is that typical journey going to look like? That typical journey is going to look like, you know, someone walks in, we'll go back to that, that example of analyzing wins and losses from your sales data. Uh, it's a bunch of structured data, or a bunch of unstructured data, and you're going to start writing some simple tools in Snowflake Cortex, they'll be as, so doing that should be, analyzing wins and losses should be as easy as summing up columns in a spreadsheet. Everyone can do that, right? Um, it should be as easy to use AI for these use cases. And that is the bet we're making. The bet we're making is these are tools that people use to, make, to do their work. They're, there's nothing magical about them. They're, we hide all that complexity and they can use this for real world use cases. Uh, and you know, every weekend I'll see someone tell me they build this cool demo. I'm like, now let's put it in production. Production, yeah. Right? And so the second thing that tends to happen once you do that is you say, okay, how good is my system? Is it hallucinating? Is it, is it grounded? Grounded is a word, is a fancy word to say it's like, knows to you know, say the truth and nothing else, right? And is it, it governed? Needs, and is it governed, yeah. right? Um, and so, and that's where you know, what people call rags and what I'm going to call raga going forward, because I'm Indian, uh, and uh, raga is like a beautiful musical tune. Um, uh, retrieval augmented gently assistant is the way uh, okay. I'm, I'm going <laughs> to rename it. I'm going to start using RAGA. I thought, I thought you were going to say agents. <laughs> it was uh, even <laughs> better. Agentic yeah, AI, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I think that's where like the Nemo Retriever and other amazing retrieval models start to come in so you can focus the LLM on the things that matter and nothing else. If you all saw Christian's keynote from two days ago, you know, 
the, the live audience yeah. member asked a question like, you know, how do I get my kid to stop watching TV? <laughs> and knowing when to say no is as, or when you don't know the answer is as important as knowing the answer. So I think that is the second piece to getting these in production. Third piece is personalizing. You know, you start doing this, you start running this for real, and then you realize uh, the cost might be out of the, through the roof, and then you start fine tuning, right? Um, and there's a whole set of techniques that you can use to fine tune efficiently. That's the Cortex fine tuning product we, we ship. Uh, and then eventually, like you said, you want to do this in a, in a trustworthy way, in a governed way, and that's what Snowflake has always been great at, right? You're building on top of a, uh, so that's how I think people will build this in production. I think the story of you know, NVIDIA, Snowflake, is we're all moving up the stack to enable right. these production applications. Like two years ago, everyone was training. Last year, everyone was, you know, do your own inference, and next year, everyone will be putting these in production. We'll have a new set of issues when that happens. I think people have to move up the stack, because otherwise, you're not focusing on your core business va uh, value, because especially for enterprises, because the learning curve is high, and so this low code, no code, uh, just being able to send data in and get an answer back is really important to be able to get the return on investment of generative AI. Like everyone has to be going into production now. Uh, 2023 was about experimentation and proof of concepts, but 2024 is all about putting it into production and getting the value out of it. it, it but people are still cautious, right? We had um, State Street on yesterday and he said, we no longer can move fast and break things, but we have to move fast but we can't break things. And so there's still a little tiptoeing going on. So what is available, help us understand, there's a lot, of, in a lot of ways you're like AWS where you throw all these announcements at us like a fire hose <laughs> and you work backwards from the customer. The difference of course is you're integrated and they've got eight million APIs. But, but so what is available today? It's important to understand what's in production, what's in preview, because when it's in preview, it's, it's because it's not ready for, for prime time. But so, what can I access today as a developer and what's sort of the timeline there? Help us understand so, that. We stage our products in three stages. Private preview you can think of as a, a limited you know, 50 customer like alpha, right? Public preview is we're open for business. You can, anyone can use us, you can walk in the door and start using it. Uh, most of our customers want things to be in GA before they'll put it in production right. for real. Because that's when you have like SLOs and things like that. Uh, Cortex functions, including the Nemo Retriever in GA. Um, Cortex search, public preview. Uh, Cortex analyst, public preview. Uh, Cortex fine tuning, public preview. So all of this stuff is real. Anyone can walk in the door, use it, start using it. The products that are in public preview will be in GA very soon. Um, very soon, I think means like within months, not years, right, yeah. I know it's sort of fuzzy, but and I get that. That's, that's to give you a cool. sense of how fast we're moving here, Cortex Functions went into private preview back in December or November. Yeah, it it's like went, six months it, ago, it right? It went yeah. into public preview in March. It went into uh, first GA mid to late April. And then, you know, it was uh, in six regions in mid to late April, and now it's in, it will be. Public in, preview to G uh, GA is you know, maybe 45 to 60 days kind of thing. Two or three months. Safe. And Safe. Safe. Pretty typical. Yeah. Um, Codex fine tuning, April private preview, public preview, like now, GA, like imminent. Can, can you, Kerry, address the inference commentary? Because again, this is the big debate. Oh, NVIDIA is not good for inference. It's too expensive. And then Jensen on the calls will say, 40% of our enterprise business is inference. Now, of course, a lot of that's, I'm sure, chat GPT, but I've always felt like you know, today's training becomes, you know, tomorrow's inference potentially is, you know. Sure. If, what's your point of view on, from NVIDIA's perspective on inference and your ability to assist there? I mean, we're talking about inference here. It's, it's yeah, a real well, deal. Our goal is actually to use less of the chip because we want to give you the most efficient uh, inference possible, right? So the NIM is all about efficiency. And what we do underneath is these optimizations that are you know, really geeky things that we really shouldn't have to talk about because uh, users don't need to know it. It was like things like distillation and compression. So moving uh, you know, quantization of FP16 down to uh, floating point eight to, uh, to store these models in smaller footprint and get a higher throughput and a lower latency. So the higher throughput gets more use out of your infrastructure, the lower la latency gets a better um, end user experience. And so these are things that we do under the covers of the NIM. I mean, we recently optimized the, uh, Snowflake's Arctic model, you know, 500 billion parameters, we put it down at FP8, we serve it on a single node 
right? So you have to do like eight GPU communication, and so and it's a mixture of experts. We have expert parallelism, implemented pipeline parallelism, right? So we all, we're always trying to optimize it to get down to the most, um, you know, most optimal model, so it's actually less, uh, you know, more uh, total cost of ownership, the, the total cost of ownership goes down, and you get more return on investment. I call it Jensen's law, the more you spend, the more you save. Um, <laughs> yeah, so You just made my day. I, I, I have to ask you about, you, you got my ear when you said agentic AI, it's a hot topic. Help our audience understand what is Agentic AI, I mean, I don't know if you have a definition for it, but I'd love to hear your, your perspective on that. Yeah, so agentic AI is the fact that um, agents go off and do tasks for you. And so right now, the typical model that's going into, pr into production is not very agentic, because you're asking a question, it might go retrieve an answer and give it back. But in the future, you ask a question and an LLM is going to make a plan. So it's, perceive, it's understanding your question, it perceives what it needs to go do, it makes a plan, and it sends off a bunch of other LLMs to go do things like call tools. When the an answer comes back from the tool, is, is that going to answer my question, is it not? Do I need to go launch something else? It's recursive, it's iterative. So all these agents go off and they come back with, a, with an answer to ultimately answer your question. And there's things like even, um, you know, have you ever asked somebody, can you rephrase your question? When someone asks um, an LLM a question, it actually is, could rewrite your question so that the, it makes the plan better. So all this is happening. It's not just one LLM happening in the background. It's, it's multiple, it's tens to dozens of LLMs that are happening to go uh, fetch and do things and, and make a plan and take action. So agen agentic AI it's it takes action. So just to follow up on that, one of the things that struck me when Benoit was on stage is he basically said, look, we've been at this for whatever, 10 years, and now we're building on top of that. My translation of that, don't hate me for saying this, is the plumbing is there, and you can't do agentic AI without that plumbing, and you guys are a big part of that plumbing, as is Snowflake, and now you can build value on top of it. Is that a fair way to think about the, the future? I mean, I think it's a, it's a fair way to think about the future. I, I, when Kai describes agentic AI, right, I think the applications you'll see in the future, you won't realize they're agentic, but they'll be agentic under the hood. I think the vision is, today these AI applications are co-pilots. You need a human in the loop to kind of like steer them. Over time, they'll get closer to pilots, right? They will steer themselves. They will realize they need help, and they will go and like farm out, like that help to some tool, they'll get data from it. Uh, they might realize they need to reflect on their you know, plan and is it correct or, and then go run a query in a SQL database or it didn't run, so that means we made a mistake, let's go correct the, the, the query based on the, so lots of what Cortex Analyst is, is aspiring towards is that vision that this tool can be a pilot for your business user, right? Uh, if you all have heard of this, the, this startup called Cognition, that yeah, this agent called Devin, think of an analyst Devin, right? And so lots of these agentic techniques are starting to show up in the products we build. We just, you know, are careful to, 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 to let our promises stay low and our delivery stay very high, but you're starting to see these show up in you know, all LLM applications. They are, there's like many LLMs involved, there's an orchestrator LLM often involved, there's a bunch of tool use involved, there's uh, you know, reflection and repair and correction and all these like behaviors that human beings do when they encounter a real world problem that you're starting to see in, in these, these applications. And it's absolutely built on top of that data foundation that, that you know, I, I think of these as we're laying like the foundation for the skyscrapers of the future, right? We're maybe at the third floor now and you're going to start seeing like acceleration towards like the, the really high floors. Exciting, I mean, this is like, you know, the joke about the uh, uh, chat GPT is like the dial-up modem. You know, <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. And, but this is the future that we're talking about which is going to really blow us. It really anyway. is. As Dave said, it's developer day. I'm interested to hear how NVIDIA engages the developer community and what kinds of initiatives there are to, to make sure that you're getting their feedback to improve your, your AI. Oh my gosh, yeah, we're, we're completely focused on developer. We have uh, developer programs, I think our, um, the last time I checked there was like oh, more than three million developers registered on our dev zone. I mean, so our whole goal has always been to make what we call GPUs easy to use, to be able to develop on them. And you know, sometimes, and then in the future, 
um, that was really for, in the past, it was really about you know, um, deep learning developers, um, uh, scientific computing developers. In the future, it's really enterprise developers. And so we, they don't have to know CUDA, right? But every enterprise application in the future has got to have an accelerator behind what's happening, right? Because generative AI is going to be an integral part of every single applica enterprise application. And so those enterprise developers need, don't have to know CUDA. They, they want to know APIs. And that's what we're doing. So we have these big developer programs to make sure you can um, get GPUs where you need them, where you can get our software where you need it, where you're doing your work. And our, and our goal has always been to integrate our platforms to where developers are doing the work. And so developers are doing the work where they need the data. It makes perfect sense for us to be a big partner. Excellent. Well, Carrie and Vivek, thank you both so much for coming on theCUBE. A great conversation. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for having us. I'm Rebecca Knight for Dave Vellante. Stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of the Snowflake Data Cloud Summit. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in enterprise tech news and analysis.